When you're working in Excel, you might find yourself looking through multiple pieces of data, trying to match things up. This can be very time consuming if you're doing it manually. One of the ways that you can speed that up is to use a formula called XLOOKUP. It's very similar to VLOOKUP, except it's more flexible. The biggest difference is with VLOOKUP, the value must be in the leftmost column. With XLOOKUP, the value can be anywhere in your data set. So let's take a look at a few simple examples for how to use XLOOKUP. In this first example, we're going to look at the basic minimum criteria to use XLOOKUP. And I'm going to do that using this list of names. In this scenario, I need to fill in which office each person belongs to. That isn't in this data set, it's in another data set. We're gonna pretend it comes from an HR system. To get started, type the equal sign and type X lookup. The formula requires three main arguments and that's just a fancy way of saying, I need three pieces of information to make this work. So what's the first piece of information? That is the lookup value. So the lookup value is what I'm going to use in order to match the data between the two data sets. So I'm gonna search by name because I know that the name is in both data sets. Now I need to type in a comma. Now I need the lookup array. We are basically telling Excel to find the name in the data set we want to search. I switch to a different tab and that would be column D in this example. I'm going to select the entire column. And then we're going to type a comma to move on to the last argument. And that is the return array. I'm basically telling Excel, now that you know that the name is in the first list and the name is in the second list, what piece of information am I going to match? In this case, that's going to be the office that the individuals work in. Now this is the minimum required information. So to close out the formula, all I have to do is type a close parentheses and click enter. So now we know that Nestor works in Seattle. If I wanna know where everybody else works, I can just grab the formula and drag it down and the information's going to automatically fill in. In this example, the formula looked for an exact match and as soon as it found it, it stopped looking and put the information into the cell that we specified. In many cases, this is probably okay. But let's take a look at a second example based on a real life scenario. This information comes from an HR system that tracks an employee for their entire tenure with the company. And sometimes people move to different offices. In our second XLOOKUP, we're going to look for the last match because a few of the people on this list have recently moved to a different office. The first three arguments are going to be the same. So let's type equals X lookup and the lookup value is still going to be the name. I'm gonna type a comma and our lookup array is still gonna be on our second set of data and we're gonna select the entire column. We're gonna type a comma again and our return array is still going to be the office symbol. Now, instead of just closing it out with a parentheses, we're going to type another comma and look at our optional arguments. The one we want for this example is the third one called search mode. I don't need to change the if not found or the match mode. So to skip those arguments, all I have to do is type a comma. Now this is one place where Excel is trying to help me out with this tooltip box here. I have a couple of choices. Do I wanna search first to last, which is the default, search last to first, or do I want to sort in ascending or descending order? In this example, we want to search last to first. Therefore, I can either select it in the tooltip or type a negative one into the formula. And then as usual, I'm going to type a close parentheses and press enter to complete the process. I quickly dragged the formula down for the exercise. And if we go back to the original data, you can see in exercise one, Diego worked in Miami. In exercise two, it's updated to reflect the fact that Diego is now in Seattle. In this last example, we're going to take a look at how to solve the NA error that you're seeing here in the third data set. 
It's based on another real life scenario where I have added two additional employees to my roster, but their information hasn't yet been updated in the HR system. So when I do my VLOOKUP, it can't find the match and it throws this generic error. We can update our formula to make it say something a bit more specific to help us out. To fix this formula, I'm going to delete it and start over. So type in equals, we're gonna look for X lookup. The lookup value is still going to be the name in column B. The lookup array is still going to be all of the names in the second data set. And then the return array is still going to be the office symbol. The first optional argument for if not found is the one that we want to pay attention to. This is going to tell Excel what to do if it cannot find a match instead of just putting the generic NA. Now this one took me a minute to figure out because I wanted to type in the words research needed but the formula is looking for numbers. So what I needed to do is use quotation marks, open quotation, enter my words, and then close quotation. After that, the optional arguments were not needed. So I just closed the parentheses. And now you see that the office symbol has updated. And if I drag it down instead of NA, the last two results show research needed. Now, of course, you can put whatever you want to in this field that makes sense for your business process. XLOOKUP is useful in many scenarios and more complicated ones that I chose to show in this video. So if you've made it this far, drop me a comment and let me know how you plan to use XLOOKUP.